Hey friends, this is my vlog about a beautiful, magical trip that I recently had to Peru, the magical Andes, and this whole calling that I followed up to have an ayahuasca experience. This trip was full of growth and expansion, so make sure to watch until the end. These 14 days were absolutely one of my best travels ever, and I'm so thrilled to tell you all about it, the things I've seen and learned from the Andean culture. It all started with a calling to experience the plant medicine ayahuasca, which is native to Peru and then it led to many other magical experiences and people. But let's start from the beginning. I booked my flight straight to Cusco, which is not the capital, but I was looking to get straight to the healing and sacred sites, so I arrived in Cusco. I immediately noticed that the city is very raw, the architecture is so minimal, the streets are stoned instead of paved, not one skyscraper in sight. What? <laughs> My Duolingo knowledge has not worked so far. I had no idea how to say orange, which is probably one of the most basic words you learn. It took a while for me to start seeing the beauty, to be honest. I began with exploring the city of Cusco where everything is in walking distance and the streets are pretty steep. Oh, by the way, Cusco is 3.3 thousand meters above sea level. They also have this sacred plant called the coca leaf, which they brew and they have like coca teas and the coca leaf is known to remove the altitude sickness. So I had four days to spend alone in Cusco until I went on my retreat and during this time I noticed how safe, welcoming and high energy Peru is. People are kind and open-hearted. I know this sounds cliche but you know how when you ask a street seller for address and if you're not buying anything from them there's a high chance that they might just ignore you? Well, it was like the exact opposite in Cusco and like all the people were so happy to help. They were smiling and even if you didn't buy anything from them, they'd still have small talk with you. And I just found that so refreshing, honestly, it was beautiful. Well, during these four days, I walked all around and at one point trusted a stranger to take me on an epic adventure for only 90 solis. I'm really good at trusting my gut feeling and I felt like this guy was safe, so I got in his car, we drove up the mountains of Cusco and wow, the epic views began. This was one of my happiest moments right here because I was thinking if I was stuck up and didn't trust this man, I would have never gotten to see this beauty. I felt like I'd already gotten my money's worth, but wait till you see the rest. So first we had a stop at the alpaca shop. Here are the beautiful llamas and alpacas and inside there were all the products made by the driver's sister. So you'll see a lot of alpaca souvenirs in Cusco in general. They're super cute. I ended up buying this little baby alpaca which I loved, paid 50 soles for it. And then we were headed to my first horseback riding experience. First horseback riding experience. Oh my god, I was so happy to have a first here because it's total expansion. Like one of my favorite questions I like to ask everyone is when was the last time you did something for the first time? And well, this was it for me. I got to ride this gorgeous horse with the help of my guide, her name was Kiara. Kiara led me around the historic sites on the highlands of Cusco for about two hours. She was strong, centered, and knew the ways of nature. She didn't even have a sip of water for the entire two hours and wasn't even tired. I couldn't help but imagine the kind of peaceful life that these people live in these highlands. They say that their economic system is not so centered around money, but rather bartering. They live as a whole community in deep appreciation and respect to nature. The mountains of Peru are so lush and full of various vegetation that it makes it impossible not to bow down to mother nature and pray. 
So here we saw a few old structures from the Inca period. Kiara and I didn't speak each other's language, but we were still able to communicate. She helped me take photos and videos too. What an angel. So my horseback riding ended, I caught a taxi to take me back to Cusco. There are so many stray dogs here, like, <laughs> I'm coming back from the horseback ride. And after a little bit of resting and seeing other places, I was ready for my retreat. So I got on the bus ride to go to my ayahuasca retreat and again, it was on the mountains around Cusco. And when we arrived at the property, my jaw dropped. The place was so gorgeous and peaceful. A combination of mountains, powerful river, green vegetation, and so many cute animals on site. This was the perfect sanctuary. I had three ayahuasca nights here and got to learn so much about the Andean traditions and their view on spirituality. This was definitely a pivotal point in my life. Obviously, I didn't record any of these events out of respect and also to be fully present for my own healing. But if you guys are interested in knowing how my ayahuasca journey went, let me know in the comments because I don't want to share something if it's not really asked for. Anyways, this retreat was at Ethnica's and I highly recommend it, 10 out of 10 for sure. For the next few days after the retreat, I went to Machu Picchu and of course we're not forgetting about Machu Picchu because it's one of the wonders of the world. This entire city was built on the mountains by the Incas a long time ago and when the Spanish attacked they had to leave and basically escape and leave their homes behind. Luckily Machu Picchu was never under attack and therefore remained intact. Here's my lovely tour guide, Ruben, who will explain a little bit. Hola, Ruben. Hola. Welcome. Gracias. Welcome to the cradle of the Tawantinsuyo. Thank Machu you. Machu Picchu. Muchas gracias. Uh, look at this picture. Machu Picchu house was in 14 centuries. All the Inca building was touch roof. Mm. Right? So this hut was inhabited by two humble peasants, family Richarte oh. and Alvarez. Yes. Lucky them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they had it all to themselves. Okay, on the trip was pretty short and I came back to Cusco again for a few days of church and museum visiting, eating good food now that the ayahuasca diet was over, and spending some time alone to center myself and practice the divine faith that had been strengthened during my retreat experience. This was truly a magical journey guys. I hope that you enjoyed glimpses of this magic. I wanted to share what I saw in this beautiful land with the world. And I'm sure I'll be back there soon. If you've ever been to Peru or have any questions about going there, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys, and like this video. I am on a spiritual awakening journey and it's only getting better and more exciting. And so I'll be sharing more of my adventures with you. I love you guys. Stay kind and open-hearted. Talk soon.